there are many animals which react instinctively to the light of the full moon. They become more active, more vocal, more fertile. Most remarkable of all are these tropical corals. Every year, they synchronize their reproductive cycle. So on one night, they all spawn together. And for these corals, it's triggered by the full moon. The Sargasso Sea, off the coast of Bermuda. Marine biologist Dr. Anne Cohen is studying how the moon affects the growth of corals. She's looking for a species known as Deporia stragosa, the brain coral. Every 29 days, on a full moon, brain corals grow a new layer of skeleton on top of the old. This growth spurt is dictated by the monthly orbit of the moon. It's like clockwork. And the skeletal layers can be used as a lunar calendar. A record of time passing. So this is the coral that we pulled out of the water today. And if we look under the microscope, you can see very fine ridges, and we know that these are formed on the lunar cycle. These are monthly bands. Okay, so it's a bit like the rings of a tree. You can use that to date it. That's right, and actually we can count about 65 monthly bands oh, right, yes. in this coral, which makes it just over five years old. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. But, here is but some corals are even more revealing. They allow us to peer into the distant past and find out something extraordinary about the power of the moon. This is a fossil coral from the Devonian era. It's 400 million years old, but still beautifully preserved. As well as monthly growth bands, there are annual bands and even daily bands a quarter of a millimetre apart. So this coral grew about a quarter of a millimetre every day. That's right. 400 million years ago. 400 million years ago. And if, if, if we took the time to, to count up all these daily growth bands within the year, we'd find not 365 days, but in fact in this coral there are 400 bands every year. 400 days a year. 400 bats so, per year. So that means that there was an extra 35 days every year. That's right. That's quite mind boggling. If there were really 400 days in the year back then, how long was each day? If you do the sums and take the total number of hours in a year and divide by 400 days, then you come to the conclusion that in the Devonian period, when this fossil was alive, a day actually lasted 21 hours and 55 minutes. Now, I must admit, I find that really weird. The fact that in the past, a day wasn't 24 hours. The length of a day is simply the time it takes for the Earth to spin once and go from one sunrise to the next. If, in the past, days were shorter, then the Earth must have been spinning faster. In fact, back in time, back billions of years, the planet was spinning so fast that each day lasted just five hours. But why should the spin of the Earth have changed over time? Because of the moon. When the moon formed, 
It was so close to the Earth and pulling so hard that it acted as a brake on our planet. The gravitational pull of the Moon was slowing the Earth's spin, and it's still doing so. As the Earth spins, the effect of friction between ocean bulge and ocean floor causes the Earth's spin to slow down. It means days have been getting longer. What was once five hours now lasts 24. We humans have been around for such a short time, about 200,000 years, that we've only ever known 24-hour days. Our body clocks are completely geared for that length of day. And yet we only have 24-hour days because of the moon. It's amazing to think that the very rhythms of our planet have been set by this ball of rock out in space. <laughs>